Today we're going to have a look at one of the hardest questions that most teachers got incorrect. So Justin, uh, when you did your teacher training, um, what were the kind of things that other teachers, other people who are now teaching physics, what did they actually struggle with? So I remember one demonstration in particular, we were all in the lecture hall, yeah. and you know there was basically a dozen physics specialists, a load of chemistry specialists, biology specialists, because we were all learning to teach science, yeah. and the instructor posed this question, so he placed a beaker of water, so a beaker of water on a balance, what's, what's the reading? So, uh, so at the moment this is 259.4 grams. Okay, and then the setup, he had this attached to a piece of string. Um, I think we can go one better than that. Um, this isn't actually my crane, this is yours, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, so I'm very jealous of this. Okay, so we can go one stage further. So this is the setup now, and the question, when we gently lower this into the beaker, so it's just partly submerged, uh, not touching the bottom at all, What's going to happen to the reading on the balance? It's essentially one in three, right? Yeah, so I guess that reading could get bigger, it could get smaller, or it would stay the same. Yeah. So I guess, what, 33% chance of like guessing it correctly? But I don't think the people, you know, my cohort were guessing. Okay. But only four people managed to get this correct. Okay, so this is a kind of question that I guess on the face of it seems relatively simple, isn't it? You just put this in there, what's going to happen? But I guess, what's this got to do with students who might be watching this video? Why is this relevant when it probably could be some relatively straightforward, like, key stage three science? Why is this going to be challenging for A-level students, people maybe going to university, and, of course, teachers who are watching this as well? Because it's, it's not intuitive, necessarily, what the correct answer is going to be. Yeah. So I, I wheel this out for open days as well, so we get the year 11 students coming around and I'll ask them that question. Yeah. And... You know, some of them are guessing, but then you ask the next question, the follow-up, which is, how confident are you? Okay, that's the, is that the kind of thing that really tells those who are, like, thinking it's probably going to be one thing because they've got a hunch, and the person who's actually got the reasoned, logical breakdown of each step to get to that point. Although you'll be surprised, lots of people are confident, and then we do the demo, and it turns out that it shatters their dreams. Okay, right. Now, of course, for students who are kind of probably watching this at the moment, most of the time they're going to be thinking about their exams. But there are other things when they might need to be able to answer questions like this, kind of based on like an everyday scenario. Yes, yeah, so um, if your exams are going well and you've got good predicted grades, yeah. uh, you can get offers from good universities that will then want to check out that you're not just good on paper, but they'll call you in for an interview and they might ask you to explain. So yes, fine, we get the answer right. Is that down to luck? Can you explain what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and you could either come about this if you know about Archimedes' principle. That seems relevant here. But you don't even need to know Archimedes' principle if you know Newton's laws. And you can examine the forces and you know resultant forces when it's in equilibrium. Uh, that's another approach that you could take to answer this. And I guess some of that is kind of stuff that people already learn in GCSE about, you know, if we've got this underwater, what's going to be the resultant force? Well, if it's stationary, then the resultant force would be zero. But then I guess we've got to think about identifying forces, maybe drawing a, a free body diagram or something, even a sketch to kind of think, OK, we've got maybe tension and up thrust and weight. And there's all of these things that you have to take account of. Now, for students who might be maybe going down the process of applying for university, how could they practice questions like this or where could they find more support? So uh, if you're in year 11 currently and you're thinking about next year, uh, I would recommend STEM Smarts, uh, okay. which is, as we know, um, the Isaac Physics have basically taken that over, so it's run out of Cambridge University again, yeah. uh, but it includes biology, maths, chemistry, so all of the STEM sciences. Uh, and and how much does that cost for that course? It's, it's entirely free. Okay, so STEM Smart, um, it might be that people watching this video have maybe done it before, or they're currently going through that process. For people who may be going into A-level physics or A-level sciences, they can find information on Isaac Physics? Uh, yes, just a simple Google of STEM Smart will take you there. But if you've missed out on that because the deadline was uh, 31st of October, yeah. uh, coming up soon is the Preparing for the PAT course. Okay, so the PAT, uh, Physics Aptitude Test. Yeah, at I Oxford University. So that's for Oxford. Um, 
in terms of preparing for that, again, what advice have you got for students? I mean, what's your involvement with the PAT course itself? So the PAT course has been running, I would say, about seven years yeah. now. So again, it's one of those things that I got involved with at the start, and I actually wrote about half of the course, and I'm annually still lecturing on that. Yeah. Uh, so some, some people might recognise me from that, where I set them lots of devious questions. Yeah. I do like my uh, nice little problem-solving questions in there. Yeah. Um, so that's something that you want to register to, even if you're not applying to Oxford and you have no intentions, but you, you want to get that extra experience mm -hmm. of doing extra questions. Of course, Isaac Physics is one of the things that's set there. Yeah. Uh, we do lectures, we do smaller group tuition sessions as well, um, but it's moved online since COVID, so now the numbers are very large. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's a selection criteria mm -hmm. uh, based for those small group tuition sessions. Yeah. But check it out on the website. Okay. So even though we might be sort of thinking at the kind of sort of the top end about you know applying for Oxford and things, these kind of scenarios where it's very much you know based on kind of everyday bits of equipment, everyday kind of principles that probably people would have all covered already. I think these are still a really good way for students to kind of. I suppose, practice their explanations and that kind of logical process of, of often having a conversation, actually, to actually come up with a solution. Yeah, th these are kind of conceptual questions. So uh, if you're familiar with Paul Hewitt, uh, you can, again, Google him and you can find a load of these things called next time questions, Okay. Uh, which are very similar to this kind of thing. It's generally a one in three chance. Um, but the idea is that you go away and you, you know, salivate and you think it over mm. and then you come back when you're confident and you can explain why you're confident to the class. But they're not necessarily involving detailed calculations. It might be, I think, was there one about, you know, if you have, if you have a snowman and you put a coat on the snowman, will they stay colder for longer and therefore stay unmelted or still stay frozen or will they warm up because they're wearing a coat? And I think it's one of these things where you don't actually have to do the calculation but you have to think about the underlying physics. Yeah, thinking about that, that that's reminded me of when I was doing my uh, undergrad degree. Uh, the question that caused the most consternation and discussion that week mm -hmm. was about a mug of coffee. Yeah. So you've just made your mug of coffee, you've poured in your boiling water, and then you realise you need to go away and do something and you can't drink your coffee for the next 30 minutes. Obviously, you don't want it to be too cold. So should I put the milk in now or should I wait and put the milk in 30 minutes later? And I guess that's just something that there are so many possible variables, and I guess you have to think about maybe Newton's law of cooling, potentially, and exponential decays in terms of like the temperature decreasing. I think like anything like that, you could probably, you could, you could debate it for ages, couldn't you, trying to get the right answer. Yeah, and, and then people go down the route of, oh, that's now going to change the colour yeah. of the coffee, so it's going to be like lighter rather than darker is that going to have effects on how much it radiates and mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things so there's there's lots of ways that you can go down and if you're in an interview situation the person who's interviewing you is going to want to you know hear you thinking out loud about all of these things there's not necessarily a correct answer mm -hmm. and you know you could give the wrong answer but arrive at it in such a logical way that they're going to be giving you a big tick and saying yeah this guy they got it wrong but i don't care about that They've yeah. got the thinking skills. Fantastic. And of course, um, Justin, you're going to be doing a course for Year 12 students quite soon. Yes. Uh, so I've got 12 weeks to revise all of AS Physics, and I'm going to throw in a few extra little beauties in there um, as well. So if you click on the link uh, that's in the description, you can find out more details about that, see if that's something that interests you. And I'm going to throw you loads of these next time questions, so you can be thinking... Uh, the thinking doesn't stop at the end of the lesson, basically. You can keep on thinking overnight uh, until the next session, and hopefully you can come back and practice giving me these brilliant explanations. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll be working on your interview technique as well. Brilliant. Justin, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.